clicking on my channel, Joy's Way, I'm Joy. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning supporter of mine, welcome back, awesome person. So today, I'm going to do a get ready with you, and I'm going to try some new makeup, like my Juvia's Place foundation, concealer, and I picked up another foundation stick for the bronzing. Now, I did try this in another video, but I used a new primer, and I didn't like the primer. I didn't like how it worked with the foundation. So I ended up stopping that video. It was like a week ago. I didn't even finish it because my face was itching so much. And that was my NYX Marshmallow Primer. Do not like that at all. So for today, I'm going to use my e.l.f. Matte Putty Primer. I'm also going to reuse these two palettes because this is what I use in the video that I tried filming and end up not liking it. And then I have this Gerard Cosmetics Lip Plumper and it looks like this. And I've never really used a lip plumper before. So let's try it out. Not that I need a lip plumper, but I'm going to try it out just to see if maybe it actually works. So at the moment it is a little tingly, but nothing like dramatic or anything. I'm going to just leave everything else that I use along with the other stuff that I've listed down in the description box because once I start talking, I'm just going to put the makeup on and just keep on keeping on with the conversation. So let's get this party started. I have tried to, I'm looking down because I have a mirror down here, like make notes like I said I was going to, to tell you guys stories of, you know, things that I did when I was younger that make sense now with my diagnosis that I have. And I'll tell you what, I'll think of something, go to write it down, and my memory just goes blank. So I guess we're just going to wing it. Now, when I was younger, I was quite the manipulator. And that's something that I can still do now. I try not to. I do know when I'm manipulating somebody. And I would manipulate people to get what I wanted. Which mainly means that I would even lie to somebody if I had to, to get what I wanted. Without even worrying about consequences. I still don't worry about consequences because, like... Let's just say, hypothetically, I knew I was going to go and whoop somebody's ass. I know that there's the chance that I could get arrested and go to jail, but I'm willing to take that. That consequence does not scare me, does not stop me from doing, you know, like, and these are my younger days, but I'm just saying, like, even now as a 42-year-old woman, if I was going to get into a fight, like, I know the consequences, I'm not dumb. And I don't try to pretend like I don't know what the laws are because I believe with the law, ignorance is no excuse to not know the laws. So I'm willing to take whatever consequence there is if I choose to do something that is considered breaking the law. I want to throw these little patches on really quick. My eyes are aging so bad. I've always had like dark under eyes and that's, I've always had like these crease things right here. It just seems that as I'm getting older, uh, it's getting worse. And I'm hoping that it'll help when I do foundation and a concealer because I've been watching a few videos and I think when I do a full face of makeup that it looks hideous because of this part of my face because it like really shows my age and if I don't wear foundation or concealer then I don't really you know people don't really guess my age but when I have a full face of makeup on shit people guess my age or actually guess that I'm older so some some women with mature skin just don't do really well with wearing foundation and concealer, but I am willing to buy it, try it out, and tell you what it's like with my skin. And at the moment, I have combination oily dehydrated skin. I always have dehydrated skin no matter what it is. So my T-zones are like super, super duper oily and like right around here at the moment is dry. I hate seasons. I live in northern Michigan and we get all four seasons in one fucking day. I've still been slacking on my skincare. I'm finding a really, really hard to figure out how to do everything that I need to do along with working. Like, it's almost like I forgot how to have a life along with work. If you're new to my channel, I bounce back and forth. It's just how I talk. I think that's why, like, it's hard for me to write down memories because I go blank and then I start thinking of something else. And that's what I do in real life. I do think that these palettes, they have palettes and, like, uh, I think they're called lip balms. Actually, they're really nice with a little bit of tint. But anyways, I love these packages. I love the packaging of it. But this is purple, this is like yellowish. 
Mm, you know, I don't really like yellow, but yellow looks really good with my brown eyes. So does purple. And they come looking like this. And it really sucks that it's not my first impressions like the other video, but I liked it. Back to my manipulating and lying days. Now don't get me wrong, I will still manipulate a motherfucker to this day. The difference is, I don't lie. Now when I was younger, I did. I lied so much about the stupidest shit. And then, I don't remember exactly the age right at the moment, but I want to say it was in my 20s, my early 20s, when I realized that I needed to just quit fucking lying. That I could still... Get what i wanted by telling the truth then i started telling the truth and there's a lot of people i'm sure that probably to this day who i've lied to is like yeah that that bitch don't fucking tell the truth about nothing and i have every right to think that because when they knew me then i was a liar and i did manipulate people to get what i wanted now i try not to manipulate people but it's really hard it's like it's in my nature so like for instance at work this girl she you know, was trying to get me to cover her shit. And I had already told my manager that I will work for her. Meaning that if somebody calls in and they can't find anybody else to like try other people, that if nobody else will absolutely do it and I have no plans, then I'll do it. So my manager told me that this chick was going to ask me to work her shift. And I worked with her yesterday. And I was like, all right. And I said, well, I'm going to tell her I'm not going to do it. I'm like, because I think she's calling bullshit. I'm like, I just worked with her yesterday and she was fine. I seen her son because she was claiming her son was sick all night long and now she thinks that she got what her son got. And I'm like, I seen her son yesterday. I said her son was not sick at all. I was like, so I just don't think that she wants to work the two to 11 shit. But that's what she, you know, got hired in to do was work the two to 11 shift. And so I told my boss, you know, the manager, but like if by chance she does call in, just, you know, let me know. I'm like, Tell her it's very important to call in by like 10 in the morning so you can find somebody else. I'm like, and then call me so that way I know. But it's after 10 in the morning, so it looks like I get a day off. But anyways, so I'm working with this girl and she's just a whining and complaining about not feeling good. And she's going to the bathroom and she don't have the diarrhea, but apparently she has the craps. And I'm like, sounds like, a, sounds like you have an upset stomach to me. Like, I bet you after you crap a couple times, you know, you're going to feel a lot better. I'm like, but seriously, I'm like, you have a son, like you're a mama. You don't get sick days unless you're contagious. I'm like, and if you just have an upset tummy, I said, you're crapping a little bit more than you need to. I'm like, then you're really not sick. I was like, but you know, I could be wrong. You may actually be super duper sick. And you know, I'm like, but at the moment I said, I'm not going to be able to cover for you. I said, I do have my own life. And just because I told the boss that if she needed me that I would be there for her don't mean that the rest of you get to take advantage of that and be like oh I can call in because I have a little bitty sniffle or a little tummy ache or because I have to poop once or twice more than normal I'm like that don't happen and then so the manipulating part came in where because that was just the realistic part so the manipulating part came in when because we have like when we're busy, we have two registers and I normally work the one on the left and she works the one on the right because she leaves before me. She's called a mid person. So they need somebody that can close. Well, not even close because we're open 24 hours, but they can work till 11 from two to 11, like on the days that I have off. So she would only have to do it like a couple of days. Anyways, I get two to three days off depending on like if they work me eight or nine hours. The manipulating part, I know I'm rambling, came where I started telling her stories about times when I was sick and how... I had four babies to worry about and she's so lucky she's only got one and he's four years old and he's potty trained and he can dress himself and you know blah 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 anyways by the end of the night by the end of her shift she was like don't worry i'm gonna work my shift tomorrow you're right i can't just be taking days off but she didn't want to do that in the beginning like i manipulated in her into realizing that she's a mama and she needs to take care of her responsibilities now i understand if she's got a fever or the diarrhea or, you know, well, not even a cough because y'all can wear masks now. Like, or she can anyway. She can wear masks or whatever, if, you know. But the other stuff, like, I understand. That, like, okay, take some time off of work. Don't come in. But if you ain't contagious, if it's just a normal everyday cold, like, or a 24-hour bug or some, you know, what is it called? Food poisoning. Like, I want to slide down. Like, deal with that shit, you know? Be a big girl. Put your big girl panties on. And or big boy panties. And uh, 
do what needs to be done, you know what I mean? But some people don't get that. Some people do not get that at all. Let's get back to like the lying stuff. So the reason I decided, the real reason that I decided to quit lying is somebody lied to me. And I'm not talking like a little lie. I'm talking like a really, really big, big, major, hurtful lie. And I'd had, I'd, I'd had people, you know, do little lies or whatever, but I don't remember who lied to me at the moment. Like, I think some of my memories are suppressed and I only think about them here or there. And I was learning a lot of stuff in counseling, but I got to the point where I was just shutting down and they were like, you need to go to a therapist. And yeah, I can't, I can't see a therapist. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I can't see a fucking therapist. I can't see a therapist because I'm not suicidal nor do I have t thoughts to hurt people or tendencies, thoughts or tendencies. I can't remember what they said, but whew, do you know how fucking irritated I am? Because I was like calling around and I wanted to know why, like why are all of these therapists telling me that I don't fit their critical criteria? And so finally I got somebody to talk to me about it. And it's because I have not attempted to, to commit suicide, nor have I, uh, nor have I thought about it. Like I don't, really think about killing myself. Now that don't mean that I don't think about how the world would be better off without me. And if I like died in my sleep or something, you know, it'd be great. And everybody could go on with their life because, because those thoughts I do have. And just because I don't go out and hurt people, I mean that I don't think about it because like when I was in counseling, you, if you tell a counselor that you want to hurt somebody, they, um, well, like, ask you some deep, you know, more questions to determine if like, you're actually going to go out and try to hurt them. Or if it's just like a normal thought in your head, like you're mad at them and you're at the moment, you're like, ah, I want to kick their ass, you know, but don't actually do it. So in my younger days, I did it. If the thought came across my mind, I did it straight up. I was getting into a fight, but now that I'm older, I don't fight unless I have to. And that's far and few in between, you know? So it's been like four years since my last fight. And before that, it was like 10 years. So, you know, I did most of my fighting in my younger days, my teenage days, and my, you know, probably to like 25, 26 years old. And not because, so like I quit fighting because I realized like how to control it or whatever, because when they diagnosed me with bipolar and I took counseling, and they were trying to help me, like, trying to help me, trying to figure out how to say it, control my anger. They did teach me a little bit how to control my anger. And they also taught me how to realize that I was starting to get angry. So that way I could maybe, like, walk away from the situation or leave, you know, so that way it would be a choice. And so that still helps me to this day. I still, if you know, there's a situation, like, to be completely honest, when somebody's shitty to me, the first thing I want to do is punch them in the mouth. It don't matter who they are. They could be 14 or they could be 88. And that's the very first thought that comes to my mind is punching them in the mouth. Now, years ago, that's something that I would have just done. I wouldn't have even thought about it. I would have just hit you. Now I'm like, okay, that's my first thought. What's my second thought? And if I don't like that thought, then what's my third thought? And usually by the time I start going through thoughts, like I'm already starting to cool down and I still may be angry and you still may be able to tell that I'm angry, but I'm not going to put hands on you angry. If I put hands on you, it's because every thought that I've had, my first thought is to hit you. My second thought is to hit you. My third thought is to hit you. And by my third or fourth thought, if it hasn't changed from hitting you to talking out the problem, walking away, figuring out something different, I'm going to hit you and we're going to fight. So I learned that. I learned that when I did the bipolar counseling, but that's like the only thing that I learned because I'm not bipolar. And borderline personality disorder but there are a few things that the two mental illnesses sh like share i guess like that's why it's hard for uh, my counselor and a doctor and or a therapist to sometimes diagnose a person from borderline personality disorder to bipolar or bipolar to you know vice versa but anyways so I, I did i learned how to do that i learned how to stop myself from fighting all the time because that was something like I knew that if I didn't, I was going to get in trouble. I had been in so many fights. I got in so much trouble. I was always able to manipulate and line my way out of, you know, if the cops were involved, which honestly, there wasn't very many cops. And about the time that I realized that I needed to change because, you know, I was 
getting to the point to where I was going to get arrested and I had young children at home and I'm like, I need to be responsible and I need to start doing the right things. That was also about the same time in my life that people just quit fucking with me. And I believe, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, because I do know that some people from my past watch my YouTube channel, which is fine. I think it's awesome. But whether some people want to admit it or not, people knew I was fucking crazy and they knew that I would stab you with a knife with a kitchen fork, with a fucking pointy stick. I didn't care. Like, if I came to hurt you, I was coming to hurt you, and I wanted there to be blood. Somehow, some way, I was drawing blood on you for me to be happy. So I just think that people just, you know, decided not to fuck with me anymore. Now, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. They all could have decided I just wasn't worth their time. But I don't know. I grew up with these people. I did drugs with these people. I got drunk with these people. I partied with these people. I fought with these people. And I just really think that they just decided, you know, that I'll just leave me the fuck alone because I was crazy. But anyways, let's move on. So I choose not to fight anymore. Where before, I didn't ever think about it. I just did it. My ex-stepdad told me all the time that I had diarrhea of the mouth. And that I needed to stop and think about what I'm going to say before I say it. And I saw diarrhea of the mouth. I do try to stop and think about it though. Like I have gotten better throughout these years, but probably not as good as, you know, I should be. I do love to just out stuff because I too like to be as surprised as you when I hear what I say. Sometimes it just flows out. Like, but anyways, so with that being said, I also think that I used to have like diarrhea of like mind control before I decided to figure out like how to control my fighting but I would just get the thought to fight and I'd just do it like I am straight serious one time I was in Walmart and I was standing in line and I turned around and there was another person in line and they were just like and I was like what the fuck like what are you looking at me for and they're like I ain't looking at you and I'm like bitch you're staring me up and down like take a fucking picture it lasts longer I used to love to say that. I don't know why, but I used to just love to look at people that were staring at me and tell them to take a fucking picture at last longer. And then when they get fucking cocky, then you fucking smack them. And I did. Like, I didn't even get kicked out because the Walmart that I was at is like one of the worst Walmarts in the world. Like, I don't think they have any security at all. But anyhow, so I was so mad at her because she wouldn't, like, I told her to quit staring at me and stuff, you know, and she wouldn't. So I just fucking walked up to her and I just fucking smacked her across her fucking mouth and told her, listen. Don't fucking look at me. You have no reason to look at me. I don't fucking know you. Now, if she would have been looking at me with all shitty, like, resting bitch face or, like, with... To me, it was, like, disgust, you know? Like, like... And I didn't know this woman. She was older than me. I didn't care. The cashier told me that I shouldn't do that, that they were going to call security and have me escorted out of the building. And I told her that was fine. She said she wasn't going to ring me up. And I said, you're going to ring me up or I'm going to fucking take my stuff and I'm going to leave. And then that's going to be you giving it to me because, you know, if you don't take my payment, like, then it's my shit. So I don't know if they ever called security, but I just paid for my stuff and left. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care. And I think I even took my time. So I really think that security didn't come. And that's what I'm talking about. I got away with a lot of stuff because, like, I would wait. I would wait for cops to get called. I would wait for somebody to do something. I would wait for people to intervene and you know I can walk up to somebody and smack somebody and nobody would say shit to me but let me see you smack somebody especially a man because I've seen that happen before too I've gotten in the middle of fights with men and women like one time I was driving down the road where I used to live at and um, which is like downstate Michigan because I'm from Michigan you know lower Michigan by Indiana anyways and I just happened to be driving down the road and I seen a guy straight up punch a fucking woman in her mouth and I was like and I got out and I went over and I started bullying that guy. Like, so when I tell you that I was the bully's bully, like straight up, I was the bully's bully. I was a big fucking jerk. I didn't care. I didn't care who you were. I didn't care what your gender was. I didn't care what your race was. I didn't care what your religious belief was. I just didn't care. If I thought that you were doing something wrong, I would stop it. And I think that has a lot to do with my borderline personality disorder also, because like, I don't know. I could be wrong. I just think that it has to do with that because I don't know why. I don't remember why I think it has to do with that. Like, this is welcome to Joy's mind. <laughs> We're there sometimes and gone a lot. I'm like taking forever to do this video. I just keep talking and keep talking and keep talking. Okay, well, I gotta let that dry. So, why I'm letting my eyes dry, I'm gonna start. Focus, focus, focus. I totally forgot 
what we were talking about. I still can't remember what we were talking about. You know, I was talking about manipulating and lying, and then I paused you guys so that way I could. Oh yeah, I gotta do my eyes. Do my foundation. I think I'm gonna put another layer on too. And I just I lost it. That's why I really wanted to do notes, but I swear my mind don't work with me like that. Because I'll start to write something down and then in the middle of the thought I forget about it. And it could be days or weeks before that. Memory comes back. I don't lose my memories, you know, for good. Not yet anyways. But I do lose them. And I do know that my lo my long term memories are better when my memory is working and I'm like, oh yeah, I did this, oh yeah, I did that. Well, I can talk about when I was younger, even like as a kid, how I just did whatever the hell I wanted to do. It didn't matter if I was told I couldn't do it. I just did what I wanted. And then I'd usually tell my mom afterwards what I did. And the reason why that was is because my mom never grounded us. Now, a couple of times she was slap happy with me. I don't know if she ever got slap happy with my brother, but I guess that's none of my business anyway. But I did piss her off a couple of times enough to where she decided that I needed to be smacked across the face or she also liked to throw stuff. So I knew what she was going to do. So like, for instance, like my memory will not work. I'm just going to give an example of something. This isn't a memory, but for instance, like say my mom told me that she didn't want me to watch a certain movie because, you know, like back in the day when I was growing up, you all you needed was like somebody 18 or older they didn't have to be your mom they didn't have to be your dad they didn't have to be your cousin they didn't have to be your brother or your sister they just had to be an adult so like you know say she said you know i don't want you to watch american pie which like i was in my 20s i think when that came out but you know for hypothetically saying you know i don't want you to watch american pie because there's inappropriate scenes in there that you don't need to see and I would say, okay, okay, I won't, I won't, or whatever. You know, or maybe sometimes I'd be like, oh, come on, mom, everybody else is doing it. And she'd be like, I'm not everybody else's mom. But anyhow, so I would leave and I would tell her I was going to watch like a Disney movie. And then afterwards, I'd just like let her know. And she'd get all mad at me and scream and yell at me, smack me maybe, or throw something at me. I mean, she didn't smack me and throw stuff at me all the time, but it happened from time to time. But you know, I guess I don't blame her. I was an asshole even to her. I didn't listen to her. She used to tell me to clean my room <laughs> and she'd tell me to clean it and I wouldn't want to clean it and because uh, I, I knew if I didn't clean it, if I waited long enough, she'd clean it and she'd clean like everything. She'd go through like everything and so I would go and get like pieces of paper and write like, fuck you, kiss my ass, you're not my boss, you know, shit like that. And I'd put it like in, you know, piles of clothes and my knickknacks like so when she was going through it, she'd come across it <laughs> and she you know, would get mad at me and it, it would upset her, you know, because I was being a jerk and she'd cry sometimes. And I thought that was funny. I know she didn't think it was funny. I mean, I don't think it's funny now, but when I was younger, I thought that was funny. That's, you know, that's what I did. I'm not going to lie about it. I did things on purpose to make people angry with me. Look at the little smirk on my face. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, I cannot. I don't know if it's like defense that I have or something, but when I tell, even when I talk to counselors, when I tell certain stories about my younger days, oh, let me tell you, I like it. And I think the reason why is because, in all honesty, being as realistic as I can be, I enjoy being mean to people. I enjoy ruining people's lives. I enjoy cussing people out. I enjoy, um, I, I just, I enjoy being evil. And I don't think that I have anything wrong with me. But when everybody else tells you that you do, then at some point in your life, whether you want to or not, well, if you want to grow, because, you know, some people don't, some people, and I could still be that person where I thought there was nothing wrong with me, you know, it could be, but I realized, you know, like, I'm the problem, like, you know, when I was telling you before, like, I was the problem with all the friends, like, I also had other problems that wasn't just my only problem, and I knew that I had to fix it because nobody liked it. Nobody liked me being mean. Nobody liked me hurting people. Nobody liked me ruining people's lives. I would brag about it. I thought it was great. And that what I did, there was nothing wrong. And it took me years. I mean, until I was 26 years old to realize that I had to grow the fuck up. And I had to listen to everybody around me telling me that I had a problem. And I had to believe them. And I had to do see counselors and 
talk things out and a lot of stuff too I've done on my own but anyway so I had to go and I had to figure out how to become a better person I wasn't I wasn't a good person I still don't think I'm a good person I'm still a work in progress because now that I'm back to working again like my asshole is coming out again I can't stand ignorant people I do understand that some people don't know how to read but if you go to a gas station and you try to get gas after like a minute they haven't oh I don't know authorized the pump then common sense should tell you it's prepaid because like that's what happens and not all gas stations will call out to you and be like prepay only pump three because my station don't do that you know so not all, not all gas stations do that but anyways so i still i'm still a work in progress right and i still have to figure out how to not get as irritated with people because i can get really irritated I mean, I yelled at an old man the other day. I was trying to be very patient with him, and I don't know the lottery machine that well yet. I know it well enough, you know, but when people want to be picky and do certain boxes and repeats and so many panels, and they don't know how to fill out, you know, the little slip that you can put in the back of it. And I don't know how to fill it out because I don't, I don't play that type of lottery. I like to go to the casino occasionally or buy, like, a scratch-off ticket from time to time. But no, but no, like, you know, no actual, like, Michigan lottery or what is it powerball or so I told the guy that I didn't know like I told him like I don't I don't know what you want you, the way you're explaining it doesn't make sense I went over like the whole entire board with them I read everything to him and he's like I don't know what to push and I'm like I don't know how to push either and when you bring up that type of lottery like you have to pay for it like I'm sure you know mine's it's called like Michigan lottery or powerball or fantasy five kino you know things like that you have to I don't know if every state has it but I think most do so like prints out a little paper and you have to pay for that and if you print it out and the person don't want to buy it, then I'm responsible for buying it because that's the policy where I work at. So I ended up trying two different tickets, $2 a piece, and they weren't right. And so I was like, I can't help you. And I'm trying to be very, very, you know, nice with them and telling them that I'm sorry, that he can come back later or he can go to another gas station, that I'm new, I still haven't learned everything, and I don't know what to do, right? This gentleman, and he was an older gentleman, he was probably in his 70s if I had to guess by what he looked like. It would take a few years. He just wasn't having it. He just wanted me to print off all these tickets and I wasn't paying for it. I wasn't paying for it, so I had to get shitty with him and tell him, listen, I cannot help you. I don't know what you want me to do. I'm already stuck paying four fucking dollars of lottery that I don't want to pay for. Like, I'm not going to do any more. And, you know, he he's like, I'm telling your boss and da 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 da. And I'm like, tell my fucking boss. I don't give a fuck. I'll fucking tell her. Which, you know. So I get really angry and like after a while I can only hold my cool for so long and then I start cussing. I don't care if you went to my boss. I don't care if you told them. What are they going to do? Fire me? I mean, I don't plan on staying that long anyways. I'm already looking for another job because do not at all like my job. I'm sorry you guys that I bounced around so much, but this is just who I am and where my friend sitting next to me talking to me or on the phone is how it would go. This is how we would talk right up. I don't like I get sidetracked so easily and I don't like I like that I like how it was so black right down there like smeared black too you know oh, I just messed up my little lines I think I really got too much makeup on I don't think that the concealer like right now like first impressions like um I don't like the concealer at all because like you see how it's like making my lashes like stick to it and then it's making it dark I don't like the darkness like, I can understand it covering up my mascara. I feel like I've had other concealers that cover it up, but it, you know, doesn't leave it black. It, like, covers it up. So I don't like the concealer. The foundation is foundation. I'm not really sure if I like it or not. I don't tend to like most foundations. I can use, like, powdered or cream to powdered foundations. Those I tend to, if I want to use a foundation, those work best. Because I think of my, my skin's mainly oily. When it changes seasons or whatever, it does, you know, does go like oily, dry. What is it, combination or whatever? I always have it dehydrated. I don't, I think that's why most foundations don't, I don't like them on myself. You know, other people might like them on me, but I personally don't like them. And I'd rather go without. But I do, like I said, I don't mind doing the wear test to show people what it looks like. This is the final look that I came up with. I'm not going to do my hair because I'm not doing anything. I might go out in the yard and work. If I go in town today, I'm going to go looking like this. I mean, I'm sure I'll take my bathrobe off and put a bra on, but my pajamas are t-shirts and um, leggings, so I can just, you know, put a bra on and wear that out. But anyhow, I'm going to give you my first impressions of this foundation and concealer. Now, if you look, 
trying to get this in. If you look like around my mouth, like under my eyes, you can see every crack, every crevice, my nose. So I'll take a few pictures and then um, throughout the day, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. It is 2.50 p.m. I wish I had a clock to show you, but I have no reason to lie to you. So I'll come back like around 11, 12 and give you my final, final um, opinion and show y'all close up. Alrighty, so it is like 12.05 a.m. And I think it was like 2.50 when I finished earlier. So that's say three. So it's been like nine hours. So, you know, like mm, a normal like day working or whatever. But anyways, I want to... I didn't reapply any lipstick. So as you can see, it is still um, on my lips a little bit. And then this is my wear test. And we're going to focus over here, right here. So I feel like right through here, I lost it, which is where I lose it a lot. I'm surprised up here I didn't, um, but it was more sweatier down here, I guess. But like around the rest of my face, so you can like see too, like that's big dewy, that's sweat, but I didn't itch. And um, so you have to use, you know, a good primer with it because when I use that, NYX Marshmallow Primer. I did not like that. I didn't really like it when I didn't use it because I'll use primer um, even when I don't wear foundation. I don't like concealer. Uh, I just feel like it just makes my eyes way too um, old. And But I did go out in public today. I went to Walmart. I took a picture of that and I did get quite a few compliments and a couple of my friends that I ran into or acquaintances from when I've bartended or waited at or waited tables at restaurants, they didn't even know because, you know, ran into a few girls and stuff and they told me they really liked my, my eyes. And I think, I don't know, I think if I would have put falsies on, then it probably would have looked better, but I just was not in the mood for falsies today. But other than that, they told me they like, they told me they like my eyes and, and a couple of them commented on my highlight, which my shiny is. I didn't put it on as bright or as thick as I normally would, but I asked them what they thought of my foundation and a couple of them had to look like really, really close. And I really think they were like being sincere about it. So I do think that this was a really good match because I only went down like here, like I didn't go all the way down. So I don't like to do that. I don't like to cover my whole like chest area with it. Unless for instance, like say I got sent PR and it wasn't quite the right color, as long as it was close enough, then maybe I would take it all the way down. But if I buy it myself, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mix like other foundations with it. If I test it out, you know, or just like do down here or whatever, because I won't be going anywhere. I went to Walmart and the gas station today and that was about it. But anyways, I am tired as heck. I need to get this makeup off my face and I need to get ready for bed. This is about the time that I'd be getting home if I was working tonight. So I haven't been taking any more naps because if I take it, I found out if I take a nap, during my um, day off, then when I go back to work, I'm dragging ass and I don't like to do that. So now I'm staying up all day, not taking any naps and making sure that I stay up as late as I would um, if I was working. And then I just got my new schedule and because they opened up third shift and they don't have enough help, they're putting me on third shift. And I told them I would work this one third shift for them, but I did not sign up for third shift. I did not apply for third shift. I applied for first or second shift. So I told them after this, they better never put me on the schedule for third shift again or I'm quitting. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I hope that you enjoyed my get ready with me and um, all day wear test of my Juvia's Place foundation and concealer. I did like the foundation a lot more than the concealer, but I have yet to find a concealer that I don't think makes me look 110. So anyways, I hope you have a wonderful night. Remember, I do love you. Remain awesome and peace out, awesome crew.